what I'm going to do here is I'm going to vacuum a high density skin in a place where the, uh, the foam was all delaminated and rotten out. There was like a water gotten in there. Originally, I got the board from our new employee. And he said, well, I got a DLAM. And so I said, sure, I'll come help you fix it. Just bring it in, and I'll show you how to fix it. So I brought it in. We brought it in, and I started with the grinder and some 36 grit just to kind of blow off the DLAM. And I realized that the, the DLAM was like subterranean. So it was about an eighth of an inch foam attached to the, to the deck lamb, and it was delaminated from the nose to the tail. So I took the, the board, laid it down on a piece of cardboard. Then I took tape, and I taped off. So I was about an inch in, so I'd make the, make the template a little bit smaller since I was coming in to make a pattern for my foam. I cut the cardboard out with a razor knife. And I laid it up on the, on the board and positioned it next to the stringer and to where the, where the foam was delaminated. I took, the, took my template and sketched out a template line on both sides, flipped it over, did the same thing on the other side. And then I took a Dremel tool with a little cutoff blade and I just followed my line. And I cut down, cut the glass down until I got through it anyway, all the way around it, and then cut down the stringer, just peeled up the glass. So I took a, a router, and I set it for about 3 three sixteenths depth, and I followed my line and just kind of freehanded it around the, the, the area that I'd already cut out. So I freehanded that around, and then I took the shaper's block, and I started sanding it down until I hit that 3 sixteenths level area and sanded it smooth and just took all the bumps out. And then I'm preparing now to um, put the high density foam in and laid it on the Divinacell foam, which is a five pound density foam, and cut it out with a uh, razor knife and fit it in here. So voila, here's my High density foam insert. Foam prep. So this is only just a seal coat. This is just a seal of foam. So we get a better, better bond. Wade is using the Fiberglass Hawaii Premix UV Polyester Surfboard Resin. After sealing the foam, Wade will take the surfboard out into the sun to cure. What I'm doing here is I'm sealing the skins also. So we also get a better bond when we put our uh, thickened resin down. Wade will seal the top and the bottom of both of the Divinacil foam cutouts. Since it's UV cure resin, he has an unlimited working time. The resin cures pretty quickly when exposed to the sun, so this part goes fast. Mixing the resin putty. What I'm doing is I'm adding aerosol to my resin to thicken it. I'm making a, a putty that I'm going to use for the vacuum process. Aerosol helps things bond because it thickens the resin. The resin will become like a, a you know, bonding putty. It's lighter than Q-cell, but it's, but it's a thickener. It will not increase the volume of your resin. If I had this whole quart to it, you wouldn't see much change at all. The volume of the resin will only make it thick. Whereas if you add Q-cell, that much Q-cell to resin is going to fluff the resin up. It's a micro balloon. So it's creating space. This is the consistency that we want the resin mixture to be. Prep the board. Weight is retaping the outside edge of the board. That way, if any excess resin comes up during the vacuum bag process, it won't get on the finished board itself. It'll just get on the tape and we can pull it right up. So I'm just refitting my Divinacell. Make sure I'm not going to have any problems when I put this back in since I sealed the foam. Here's a 
I'm going to just poke a few holes. It'll give release to the excess resin that's going to go into um, what I'm vacuuming here. So whatever is excess will basically come up through these holes. Vacuum bag prep. I'm going to seal one end of my bag. So I'm going to pull my vacuum tape out to the length or the width of my bag, maybe a little bit beyond. This product is called Tacky Tape, and it's used by all the vacuum bagging pros. Seal it down. People use like a roller to roll their pins to roll it down. It's very important to get both edges of the bag completely flat without any air leaks. If there are any air leaks, it'll compromise the vacuum process. Wade is now cutting our breather cloth. He's going to cut this to the same outline that he cut the Divinacell foam blank insert. And what the breather does is it pulls air from your whole vacuum surface. It's kind of a vacuum. It's kind of a vacuum pump. It creates a vacuum. It's easy one. You just plug it into the compressor. It blows the compressor air over the valve and it pulls the air out of the bag. This is called a frog and it's uh, it's the back valve and this is a quick release. So this goes from my compressor air to the quick release and it pulls the air out of the bag. So this will get taped down to my breather cloth. Time to vacuum bag. Weight is catalyzing the resin mixture at 1%. This will give them enough working time to saturate the blank and to lay the pieces in place and then to put the board inside of the vacuum bag. After the foam has been laid in place, Wade is going to lay out the peel ply that we have previously cut. Resin will not adhere to the peel ply. That's why we lay it down first and then our breather cloth on top of that. Now Wade is going to tape down our breather cloth. This way when we slide into the bag, it won't shift around during the vacuum process. As you can see, we've taped down the frog to the breather cloth. Then we'll secure the breather cloth down to the board. This way we'll have a nice solid bond. After we've done that, we can slide the board into the bag. Now we're going to seal off the other end with the tacky tape. Just like we did with the other end, you want to make sure you get it nice and tight with no creases or air pockets. That way you'll get maximum vacuum suction. Wade is cutting a small hole. That way we can attach the other end of the frog. As you can see, there is a rubber grommet that when it's pushed flush to the board will be an airtight seal. Our compressor is hooked up and ready to go, so now all we have to do is wait for the vacuum to kick in and suck all the air out of the bag. While that's happening, you're going to want to smooth it out and make sure there's no creases in the vacuum, otherwise resin will get sucked into that place, or worst case scenario, air will get sucked into there as well. 